And today's edition of Tommy Travels the Second is brought to you by Philco Starlight and Starbright 2020 Electron Tubes. Pre-tested for enduring performance. And today's adventure starts off with a look at a water tower. St. Louis Park, Minnesota water tower that is. And this is just for KCVids816. My friend Spencer gave me a shout out in one of his videos recently and so I'm giving him one in return. If you haven't seen his channel, uh, please check it out because it is great. But we didn't travel all the way out to St. Louis Park just to look at a water tower. No siree. We are also here to check out the Pavic Museum. And if you are a fan of old radios and TVs and classic broadcasting, this is something you're going to want to stick around and check out. Well, welcome to another beautiful day for an adventure right here on Tommy Travels the Second. And that's right, we are at the Pavic Museum in St. Louis Park. And this is going to be an adventure so nice, I'm editing twice. <laughs> With all of the broadcasting history inside of that building, it is worth it. There'll be a lot of content in this video, but there'll be even more on my main channel, Tommy Travels. That's my main weekly channel. It's Tommy Travels. If you've been to that channel, you've heard that before. <laughs> and so this should be really fun if you are brand new to this channel go ahead and hit subscribe so you don't miss out on a thing and come on with me guys let's go see what there is to see And this museum kind of has its whole mission statement right out in front. History and technology of electronic communication. Educate, inspire, and preserve. Minnesota Broadcasting Hall of Fame. This should be an interesting day. Wow, look at all of this broadcasting history in this museum. Quick look at everything, or at least most of the things that we're gonna see today. And this video starts off with a jukebox. This is a 1934 Wurlitzer P10 jukebox. And the sign says it would, went into full bloom with the repeal of Prohibition. <laughs> because when they repealed Prohibition, it was time to party. And this actually works. We can put in this, put in a selection. Let's just try. Oh look, one's already just coming on for us. Let's see what we get here. That is awesome. That is the old sound that we like to hear. You don't hear that anymore on the CDs and cassettes. <laughs> well, you don't hear cassettes anymore at all these days. Absolutely beautiful. And this is Joe Pavic, who is an instructor at Dunwoody Institute in the late 40s. And the students of the day would disassemble old radios as part of learning their craft. And he became concerned about what they were losing. And so he started squirreling away old radios and started a collection. And then when he was looking for someone to pass his collection on to and start a museum, he couldn't find a buyer. He was going to auction it all off. And then this gentleman right there, his name is Earl Bakken. And he is also a famous person in the Twin Cities who founded Medtronic, a very, very huge company. Him and this gentleman here, Paul Hedberg, uh, created a nonprofit and created the, uh, the Museum of Broadcasting in October of 1988. And uh, Rudy, Rudy Perpich actually named that day uh, Joe Pavic Day in Minnesota. And so that's how this whole place got its start. Welcome to Tommy Travels the Second. What is your name? My name's Alex. Alex, nice to meet you. Thanks and well. what is this that we're looking at? This is the magnetophone. It yes. is the uh, first time that a 
nightly nationally syndicated radio broadcast um, took place in the U.S. and that was Bing Crosby's 47-48 season of his show. He was a little bit tired of uh, doing the show every night and of course they had recording before but that was just copying over the East Coast show to the West Coast show but this time he could record all his shows for the week in one day and then send them out and then edit them down. Um, yeah, and it's also the origin of the laugh track and canned applause. Uh, Jack Mullen, his audio engineer, only brought back enough tapes to last about just under a season. So they had to stretch the tape by reusing the applause and the laugh. <laughs> so wow. Yeah. Might need to turn up the volume on this end. Okay. Play over the big speakers. Yes, sir. Wow. She'll be right over with you, man. No, you're going ahead and I'll join you. I just did my walk and I gotta hang it up to dry. Oh, when the it runs at 30 stay. inches per second. Wow. wow. So this is an original broadcast from all the way back then, huh? This is the first time that he recorded and, and edited his show. Oh my goodness! The very first recording, but it's a it's a duplicate. But, yeah. yeah. And here's the first pressing for that show. So this is what we're listening to right there, right? Yep. Wow. And Mullen, Mullen brought this machine back from Germany. He was stationed there during the war and heard a orchestra that had just played that night, but it was 2 a.m. and he said, wow, those guys are going a long time. <laughs> but they had just been uh, using this and the radio station was playing it back, so at the end of the war he went back and picked up two machines. And, uh, oh my goodness. So Bing Crosby sang into that microphone or performed into that microphone, correct or not? I'm not sure about the origins of that yeah. mic. It did come from Jack Mullen's collection, so oh, okay. it might have been used by somebody important. Uh, uh, wow. And then, that... and then something else kind of interesting is that um, the story goes that, you know, the Germans had this for since like 1935, so and the legend goes that if it wasn't... Uh, it was such a high fidelity recording, but if it if it was marked top secret, the U.S. would have known about it. But because it wasn't, we didn't really know that much. <laughs> that is so great. Thank you so much. They've even got some old microphones from the TV and radio stations here in Minnesota. And the Twin Cities, KSTP, we're very familiar with that, and WCCO-TV. And then KAAA, I haven't heard of that, or KYSM, but these are all old time microphones. This is from 1954. Absolutely cool. I like this one. It looks like an old telephone dial, rotary phone almost. Look at all of these old radios that they have from the 30s through the 60s table and portable radios. And I love the dials on this radio. Back in those days, you couldn't just tune in a station. You had to dial it in just right <laughs> to get the perfect sound. Yeah, right, right. Oh yeah, right there, that's perfect. listening to that Bing Crosby radio broadcast it was on this speaker it's a Western electric loudspeaker out of the st. Paul World Theater circa 1929 that has some very good sound to it and so this is a super heterodyne it is considered the Rolls-Royce of reception this was first released in 1924 a very cool piece of history and the original price two hundred and twenty dollars that was a lot of money for back then <laughs> seems like a good deal today but <laughs> that's quite a bit all right so this is a 1957 teletype corporation automatic send and receive model 28 
<laughs> was capable of, in addition to typing it live, you could pre-type a message and would print out the tape here with a five bit code. Each combination corresponds to uh, two letters, numbers, or punctuation marks because five, two to the fifth only gets you 32 combinations. And when you have 26 letters, 10 numbers, and a bunch of punctuation, that doesn't get you very far. <laughs> so the advantage of the automatic send and receive model was that it would pre-type this. And then, um, and then you could, one, spell check, and then two, send it through the feeder later at either a rate of 60 or 100 words a minute, which is much faster than I can type. And that would reduce the amount of time that you're on that shared network with all the different radio stations and your other uh, affiliated news uh, producers. So we're going to send, uh, send it out. Uh, it goes over the telephone line as a series of tones. And uh, it's at 60 words a minute right now just to reduce the wear and tear on the machine. Yeah. Then it types it all out. And, yep. it... and there's little fingers, spring loaded fingers that will make contact with sense when there's a, a chat there. Oh my gosh. Breaking news The Queen of England recently visited the Twin Cities. <laughs> As she was walking down town, she slipped and fell. Doctors say she will be fine. <laughs> but this is the worst case of broken crown since the famous Jack and Jill incident. <laughs> that is hilarious. And the machine. Wow. So this is how it all comes together in here, huh? That's the roll of paper, and then that's where the ticker tape comes yep. out. Wow. That's fascinating. Thank you so much. Yep. This is a robot dial? Yeah, so as the, as the machine's got more and more selective, meaning they could tune into a very precise station, it took a lot longer to get around the whole band, so the white needle is the one that's indicating the station. The gold one is kind of like a fine tuning there. So it takes a long time to get around, but they put a motor on it. Oh, cool. And then we'll find a good strong station here. And so it's got the tuning eye. It gets narrower with more signal strength. Also electronic tone control. And like, like a lot of the thir late 30 Zenith, adjustable speaker cone, forward for talk, back for bass. It just allows some of the sound to bounce around the cabinet more. Oh yeah. I can tell that got more bassy there. And you could also put less strain on your tubes by switching to local. Doesn't need as much amplification. Oh okay. Wow that is neat. Shortwave and then police. And uh, aviation and uh, nautical. Oh, so different. You could just switch that thing, and then it would change what you're dialing into. Yep, the the free, the uh, the band. The band. They've even got yeah. some old TVs here. This one is a 1962 Philco Compact Townhouse Television. <laughs> and I like the little magazine rack on the bottom. Showing some twins history down there as well. Oh my gosh, you guys, they have a theorem in here. I love these things. <laughs> I've gotten to play one of these before. And so basically what you do, this was the first instrument ever invented using only air and electricity. See? <laughs> So, um, the level of your hand, that determines what the pitch is. And then the level of your hand over here determines what the volume will be. So you see my hand over here, as we go up, the volume goes up. 
or down, or up, or down. I love that. This is awesome. <laughs> I could be here all day doing this. <laughs> that is worth the price of admission. And check out these old novelty radios. These are all radios. That is not a car, it's a radio. That is not a phone, it's a radio. <laughs> Some of these look familiar. From back in the day, a Barbie, Pinocchio, Smurf, Ernie and Bert in the background, and even Batman and Superman. They have met again. Oh, look at this. They've got a whole room here. Just like walking into a radio station. So if you're a DJ, you can be a DJ right in here. They've got a couple of turntables. They've got some records. All of the reel-to-reel -reel equipment. <laughs> and even the Western Union machine. In case something really important happens, you'll be able to broadcast it right out. On KPAV 1200 on your AM dial, Pavic Radio. <laughs> It's another sunny Saturday afternoon here in the Twin Cities. Tommy travels the second spin in hot stacks of wax right off the racks. <laughs> right here on KPAV Radio, St. Louis Park. It's a uh, wireless telegraph invented in 1901 by Marconi as a messaging service. Um, they did have one aboard the Titanic, but since a lot of the operators would only be awake when their passengers were awake, the nearest ships... Um, didn't receive those messages, but it did save 700 lives. Could go 2,000 miles on a clear night. Wow. That is cool. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Well, you guys, this has been another successful adventure here on Tommy Travels the Second. And we have seen a lot of broadcast radio history here at the Pavic Museum. And we've been burning hot stacks of wax right out the wax. <laughs> oh my gosh, that is so annoying. Sometimes I annoy myself. <laughs> but if you guys did like what you saw here today, go ahead and hit like on my YouTube channel. While you're at it, go ahead and hit subscribe and the little bell notification next to it so you can be the first to know when a new adventure comes out. And if you liked what you saw in this video, there's more stuff, more content, more creations, and Tommy Travels, my main channel. And there's a, a link in the description below. And thank you guys so much for the support that you've given me so far. And until next time, I hope to catch you on the flip side.